um, repair wise and where it where it's sat where it's sitting right now and um, there is there is some minor stuff that it is getting war there is there is some larger items that could be fixed to to bring it up to um, you know a, a better standard but by no means is it war right out um, it's just uh, we looked at um, the next few years if we delay if we look at delaying it um, um, we look at um, we have a very large equipment outlay over the next few years so um, and I think where it really comes down to is hopefully we get a good trade in on it with it running as well as it is um, and it is one of the um, one of the item one of the things with the backo is it's a very important piece of equipment uh, it goes all the time for the for us on, in our department it, it does snow uh, it cleans our parking lots in the winter time it'll it'll load our trucks um, as well as it's um, it's gone it's it's gone not every day but it goes you know throughout the week throughout all the summer replacing uh, fixing drains and we use it uh, every week to move the garbages and, and that sort of thing. So it is one of our key, one of our key pieces of equipment um, that we don't have a replacement uh, in the township if it goes down. So um, we would have to look at uh, outside the, the township if we had to rent something, if it did go down. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, Paul, did you want to pipe in Paul? Uh, yes, just if I may through you, Madam Mayor, it, it's also essential. The backhoe is a piece of machinery that our department is also dependent on. Uh, for our larger projects that we don't have machinery for, the public works staff is more than helpful to come out with the backhoe uh, to help us with our projects. So it, it, it is an essential piece of machinery in the township. Okay. Jeff? Or um, Mayor. Counts, I was going to go to Daniel and then I'll go to you, Dave. And you'll just hand up first. Thank, thank, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I was just had a question about the soccer field, if I could. Um, just, just wondering with the, the care and maintenance, I'm just wondering what the responsibility of the soccer association is with respect to maintaining the fields, or is that solely sort of on the township? And I was just thinking with respect to offsetting costs of mowers and, and that sort of thing. And I, I, it was just a question. Perhaps for Paul or Jeff, Madam Mayor. Yeah. Who, whoever I, wants I to may, take it, yep. If I may, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes, uh, you know, for the, the maintenance of the fields, that would rely on our department. That wouldn't be soccer. They, they are very good at working with us and uh, having the lines done, which, you know, in the netting. Okay. In some municipalities, uh, you know, do that. The municipalities do that. We have a very good relationship with our soccer association. Um, I think for the investment that the township is doing in that field, it's worth while that we are the ones maintaining it. Uh, Cause you know, then that way we can assure that our investment is being maintained. Okay. Thank, th thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Madam Mayor. Okay. Uh, Dave. Jeff, would you consider keeping that backhoe in light of us getting our um, salt shed and maybe you know, needing a secondary piece of equipment. And I don't know if that's the type of equipment you would use 100%, but I'm thinking it may be. And or also what you and Paul both stated, how important the piece is. If, if you're not blown by, you know, blown away by the, uh, by the offer to purchase or for the trade-in value, I really hope you'll come to council to consider keeping it if it's in good shape. Yeah, and very good point. If, if the trade-in um, and, and the equipment manufacturers will play a bit of a game with the trade-in, um, depending on um, their bidding and, and if they want the piece of equipment to get in here. But it, exactly. So if, if the trade-in was not appropriate, we could pull it out uh, and keep it. Um, I'm not sure I would keep it based on loading. If we have our own sand and salt and loading it, it's certainly we, we would, we've talked about not using um, our backhoe for loading the sand that we would look for maybe a, um, a, a rental loader um, in the area that we could we could lease for the winter just because of the um, um, one we need the backhoe out to right now the backhoe goes and cleans all of our um, parking lots and um, laneways and that stuff so there is there is a, a, a function of it that if if it was to load um, 
um, motor. So we could keep the second backhoe, but then you're into maintenance um, and really for the off the offsetting maintenance, it would be probably better to just rent a, a local loader for the season when we need it. Does that make, is that kind of answer your Yeah, question? I just, you know, I, I would think with limited use and a backup backhoe, if it's, if it's service, if it is working well and in good condition as a backup, it, it may be a great value I, I, depending on the trade in. It may be great value for the community to have. That's all. Yep. Yeah. But you answered. Yep. Thank you. Like you, you'll make that decision obviously at the time or, or you'll come back to council if, if there's a concern. So, yeah. Yeah. That would be something that would come through on the, on the, the tendering of the, of the uh, equipment. Um, uh, yeah. Your recommendation. That's I just, yeah, I just would like you to keep that under consideration. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good point. Jaden. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to clarify: is the the one hundred and sixty thousand is that after the trade in, or is that the cost of a new backhoe? That is the cost of a new backhoe, um, and that's just a rough um, estimate. What's been coming through on the tenders now, um, and then um, we don't really know what the trade in will be, so we don't it, it, that hasn't been included in that figure. Thanks. Okay. We we'll done with on. that one? Okay. Then we'll move on. Okay. We'll give it back to Jeff. Public <laughs> this okay, is we'll, the uh, next bunch of slides. Uh, the sand and salt shed. Um, we've talked about this. The RFP came through. Um, and then there's a, an asphalt cost when we... Um, when we put the floor in in the um, in the mixing area in front of the uh, front of the um, sand salt shed, so um, I, I'm not sure. Uh, I know we've talked about this already. Um, it's being funded partially by development charges, uh, 27%, and then 73% will be through uh, the building reserves. I'm not sure if anybody has any questions on that. That it, that's really a non-optional like really like, I mean it's we are being uh kicked out of our existing like I mean that's that that there is not up for discussion really right? not no it's, it's but we'd still mention it in the yeah you're yeah you're right. no understood, understood, but the community I, needs to realize that it's really not like if there's no real options there we've done everything we can do to, to, that's to correct make, yeah okay no thank you that's correct um, Frank Street uh, construction, um, there's a bit left to do. We have to do the final cone of pavement for 2021 project. Um, it's, it, it'll be a carryover from, uh, from um, this year and it's in the, the, construct, the road construction reserve. Um, it's, again, it's, that's again, a fairly straightforward one. Um, I'm not sure if anybody's got any questions on that. Jeff? Yeah. Sorry, I just realized. Sorry, Jeff. I, sorry, can I ask one more question on there? I, I believe you've answered this. I just forget it. The they're they're probably were we renting or was there any was there going to be cost savings ongoing from having our own salt shed or not really or was it just basically material anyways and we have to build the structure because the salt salt or did we kind of have an Will we have a cost savings a little bit at all, or not really? Yes, there will be a um, there will be a cost savings owning our own building. We do uh, we do have to pay uh, right now for um, um, we buy the sand um, we buy we buy the sand through the MTO. Um, we can now um, locate a, a local source that's. Uh, I don't want to say it's a you know I don't want to make the MTO, but we would definitely save a little bit of money by locating a local source. Mm -hmm. um, as well, um, you know, we are purchasing our own salt now, so there won't be, um, there won't be a, we used to buy it through the MTO, but we're, we've changed that. We're buying our own salt, but we also pay for um, use of the, the, the loading, the loader. Um, every time we use it, um, there's a charge. Every time we, we load a truck or we move that loader, we have to pay for it. So there will be, um, even if we decided 
to rent a local loader ourselves, we still would be further ahead than the money that we actually pay for the use of their loader. So there is a, there is a savings there. Um, we also, um, I think some of the stuff will be, we're under, we're our captain of our own ship. Um, like right now we are, we are using part of Mark Scott's elevators to store salt uh, for the sidewalk machine. Uh, once, once we, um, once we have our own shed, we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to access salt with the sidewalk machine right from our own um, garage, rather than relying on a, a an outside source. Mark's great; um, he's been really um, wonderful to work with. But at the same time, it's nice to be in control of your own uh, storage area. Um, and the other thing it, it gives us is um, the ability. To, uh, to, to get things organized prior to the season. Um, you know, if we have a chance uh, throughout the year, if it's a rainy day and we want to mix up uh, our sand and salt, um, we certainly gives us um, something, uh, an activity that can do um, rather than being um, forced to do it when, when the MPO gives us the okay to work inside their shed. So there, there, is, there is benefits to having our own shed um, that, yeah. that really helps managing our system. So there is there is benefits there also. But would it be like I got everything after you said? I, I agree with and a, a lot of efficiencies, a pile of efficiencies. Would it not be able to be funded from some of our efficiency uh, money too, or no? You've listed a lot of efficiencies. Yeah, I don't I don't know the full in and out of the efficiency okay. fund that was. Yeah, that was good. Sure. Rather than tapping into our building reserves, that I mean, you, you listed probably four great efficiencies of having it closer to our community and you know township and, and running it. I don't know if cap, we don't maybe need to answer that now, but I, I it, anyways, you've listed a lot of efficiencies if it can be used. I think that that efficiency it's not where it, that's not the right usage of that word. I think it's more that's how we started using it. It was more like modernization of our way we do business I guess but we've already allocated some of that to other different to different projects but mm -hmm. okay no very I'm good thing. yeah I see I see what you mean though okay. but I do think when that when the efficiency money was first given out there were um and maybe we didn't but I think there were some communities because I think initially we got we did we just got efficiency money and you could use that for at um whether it was savings you know through changing the way you heated your building or something like that um i believe that that was some in, in some cases that's how the money was used and then you're absolutely right catherine then they've gone to this whole modernization that you have to apply for and everything. But so we've spent all that initial efficiency money, I think that started probably three years ago. Okay. Um, yeah, so we got that, it was in 2019 that was given to us. And then earlier this year, we had to allocate it so that we were allowed to, um, we had to show that we allocate it for future projects or had spent it so that we could be part of the other intakes of right. that funding. Yeah. So we've already earmarked that whole fund for uh, certain things and that was done back early probably like february okay thank you yeah. jeff when it comes to that the salt shed um and I, I maybe this isn't the place to ask it but i will like do we have to do anything environmentally for to have the the salt on um on a on our property yeah, so, um, and, and again, I, I believe it's, if you use 500 ton of salt a year, um, you have to fill out or you have to um, develop a salt management plan. Oh, okay. Um, we use, oh, um, I forget our numbers. It's our, the salt that we bring in, uh, I believe is around 200. So we're not, we're not even close to the minimum amount of salt that we can have on site before we have to actually develop a plan for it. So, um, I mean, don't get me wrong, we still have to do things um, and, and follow proper, proper procedures and storing it and that sort of thing, but we don't have to go to the, um, 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 uh, it's not, it's the federal environment um, Canada 
for uh, for for a assault management plan. Okay. So we we're, we're small enough that we don't fall under that. So. Okay. Okay. So again, there's no um, there's no extra costs that we'll, we'll be incurring because of that. So. Okay. Okay, here we go. Um, Alice Street. Um, I know we, we, we um, in the 2021 budget, we put in Alice Street and Saintsbury, uh, Saintsbury line for reconstruction. We did the, uh, we put engineering in, in 2021. So the engineering can be done to look at um, these two construction projects in 2022. All right, we, I'll talk First about Alice, Alice is a project that is in our asset management plan. It includes road, water, sewer, um, reconstruction or repair. Um, the road budget will include sidewalk, curb, pavement replacement, um, or and pavement replacement. Stormwater is also being reviewed and any deficiencies um, along the street will be addressed uh, through this construction. Uh, the interesting thing with Alice is is a county road, um, and what this means is that this will be a cost sharing project. You know, as the design is completed, a review with the county engineer will take place, and to determine um, what what costs are uh, associated to the county and what costs are associated to the um, township. And really, what it comes down to is the county has the responsibility of the road. Uh, and the township has the responsibility of the boulevard. So sidewalks, uh, curbs, uh, light lighting, um, that sort of thing fall on the township. Um, the pavement and the pavement surface, um, anything uh, to do. And then, and then storm water is a combination that goes to both. So the road surface goes to the county and then there's a breakdown of the storm sewer because it, it helps both the boulevard and it helps both the road. So there'll be a, a combination there. So that'll break down um, those costs. So once we, once we get our design in place, we'll sit down with Chris and we'll review it um, and, uh, and see where the county, uh, um, what line items the county line up, lines up with and then what line items the uh, township lines up with. In this, project, we're proposing that uh, we use our funding um, th through the CCBF and OCIF that Catherine mentioned at the start, uh, and then the rest will be funded through road construction. I will mention Alice Street again when we talk about the water um, and the sanitary budgets, because anything that has to do with the water uh, or the water main replacement on Alice will be funded through uh, the water capital uh, uh, works and then anything that has to do with sanitary will then be paid through the sanitary reserves capital reserves um, I will kind of I'm going to keep going on Saintsbury because they're kind of connected I would normally stop here we could we could talk about Alice but um, unless we well maybe I will stop if anybody has a question about Alice and if it gets repeated when we start talking about Saintsbury then then so be it is anybody have any questions on Alice just those two numbers there, are full, guesstimate for full project cost or our cost? Those are full project costs. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, okay, I'll just, look, I'll, I'll kind of go over Saintsbury and then some questions may pop up um, because these two projects are connected. Uh, so Saintsbury line, um, this is an urbanization upgrade project and that has to do with growth. Um, the project will include sidewalks, curbs, turning lanes, street lighting, and improved stormwater. The project will be uh, a continuation of the upgrade that was started with the intersection at, at Richmond and Saintsbury. It'll begin, it'll begin at Wellington and go to just past the intersection of Market Street. And the reason for this is based on the storm design for this section of road. So basically, um, when we started the intersection at, at Richmond and Saintsbury, it needed storm. And it needed enough storm that the existing storm main in Saintsbury was too small, so it had to be upgraded. So the storm main is being upgraded all the way to the Whitfield drain. Um, and the Whitfield drain crosses Saintsbury just north of Market Street. 
So it's an ideal cutoff point for a project because if we jump the Whitfield drain, uh, it begins a whole new storm sewer design. And um, it, it just, it, it makes sense to, um, to, to use that, the Whitfield drain as our starting and stopping point in projects. So if people are wondering why I, we picked that as a, as a start and a stop, it's due to the stormwater design. Um, Saints Mary is also a county road, so there will be cost sharing as well on this, on this stretch. Again, it'll be the same uh, review as on Alice Street. Um, we're proposing a sidewalk on both sides of the street north of Spencer, uh, and that'll be an option that we can look at with council. Uh, and the reason that that's an option is with our discussions on further growth, um, there was a, an interest on making sure that we had a connection uh, to, um, to old, old Clover and Spencer Park and to the rest of the town rather than having multiple crosswalks going across, um, going across Saints Ferry. Uh, there was a, a bit of a concern talking about further growth that we make sure that we have uh, the ability to people uh, can, can walk and move around on Saints Ferry uh, safely. So there is, we are bringing forward an option to have sidewalks on both sides of the road there. Um, the, uh, the project, the idea with these, both these projects is to do a, a two-step two project. Alice and Saints Ferry would go out as one tender um, with line items so that we can divide up the costs appropriately for each project because Saints Ferry should be funded or will be funded, I should say, primarily through development charges. Um, this is a growth project there. It's been, been in the, um, it's, it's been in the development charges for a number of years. Um, obviously costs have risen, so we're going to have to adjust the development charges going forward. Um, but, uh, but that's it'll be a development charge funded um, project. Does anybody have any questions about Saintsbury? So Jeff, yeah, I do. If that's all right. Yep. So are you are you saying the county is pro proposing that we would do sidewalks on both sides of the roads because they don't want to do a crosswalks on a county road, which I heard at the one meeting, and that sidewalk, so that's our cost, I believe. No, the county, the county would not, the county's not telling us, uh, um, they wouldn't give us direction on whether they want sidewalk or not want sidewalk. And, and they will, you know, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to speak for Chris in the counties, but they, they will want to limit the crossings. If we want crosswalks on Saints Ferry, they'll, they'll want it um, to, to a couple of spots only at the min or at the maximum, I would believe. But again, I don't want to, speak for the county but no I didn't we're not bringing forward an option of having sidewalks on both sides of the road strictly because of the county um, I'm bringing that option forward more along the point that when we were talking about further um, development taking place on the east side of Saintsbury that we made sure that we had the ability for those developments to be able to reach the rest of the town um, so would those sidewalks go from that development all the way to Clark's? Is that like on both sides of the road? Is that what you mean? No, no, I, we wouldn't go past Spencer. Spencer, Fr Francis and Spencer with the double sidewalk. So if, they okay. Got, okay. so if they got to Spencer, people could walk in and go to the park um, that's on Spencer Ave. Um, so that would give them access to Spencer. Hmm. Yeah, it just seems like it's, it just seems like it's a, you know, and again, I, I'm, I, I would agree with whether it be a county road or not a county road, uh, having multiple crosswalks doesn't make sense. You should, you know, walk to the crosswalk and go across, but just sidewalks, just that, having that infrastructure, that expense, the maintenance and everything, you know, having them on both sides of the road, I, I just, again, I, if it means, you know, an extra crosswalk, somewhere along there um yeah i just i i look at that long term that that's a huge expense and maintenance and re, you know replacement in our in our asset management yeah not i would i would and that's why i say it's an option 
And, and it's an option that I think um, in the design that, that we can, um, I would look for direction on because I agree it is an expense and we will have to maintain it. Every, every um, meter of sidewalk we put in, we still have to clean in the winter time and, and uh, you know, keep, keep an eye on uh, as it ages. Um, so uh, there is a cost to it. There's definitely a cost to it. But at the same time, I, I look at, um, uh, you know, Saintsbury is going to be a vis very busy road. Um, and if you look at um, other, uh, you know, like Main Street in Lucan um, and other areas where you have a, a more of a collector road rather than a, than a, than a say, a, a subdivision road, um, they generally tend to put sidewalk on both sides of the street. Doesn't mean we have to, and it's certainly an option only here. So, so what's, I, yeah. what's the county's take on the movement of healthy communities and biking and paving the shoulder and making bike paths? Do they say if you want a healthy community, that's up to you, or are they in favor of that and they do that? I I know uh, you know in discussions with the county on on Saintsbury, I know um, that is an option. They. Um, um, it, it has, the county looks at connections. They look at if we put a bike lane out to Fallon, where do people go to Fallon? Um, they don't necessarily look from, you know, a, a street in town to a second street in town. Um, but at the same time, if we as the municipality wanted bike lanes, um, the county would be, you know, the county that it, it's, it's an option for us to, to, to do that. And it's certainly, um, an option to put a bike lane in and eliminate one of the one of the sides of the sidewalks. I, uh, you know, Chris, and we've had that discussion about bike lanes on Saintsbury. I think that he, would be, he's, uh, yeah, oh, he's not going to push for it because he doesn't know where the bike lane goes um, as a county as a county as a county road. But at the same time, if we as a town want a bike lane, that would be more of a long for us to to put in the the design. Like I look at, like for myself, I, I think of a bike lane along Saintsbury that's at the furthest part of the subdivision, you know, development, you know, and then to basically our one and only Tim Hortons and our one and only variety store to the set of lights, I guess is kind of where I see that. And I never really, you know, maybe a bike lane and then a, and a sidewalk on one side as far as urbanizing that area would be a good thought, you know. I might just yeah. chime in on this, on the cycling, because Chris has, he, I think the last time that he was at county council or I, I, I'm, excuse me, when he, the last time he presented to Lucan council, which was a couple years ago now, that's when the draft, he had drafted the cycling um, strategy. It has since been adopted by um, the county. Um, and I have to say it's an expensive uh, strategy and um, I'm sure Councillor Hodgins would back me up on that. Um, but it, it, when you put cycling lanes in, it is extremely expensive. And the approach that the county is taking is that they're doing it obviously in tandem with projects that are ongoing. And every community um, in Middlesex County um, is mapped out with with a portion of roadway that is that will have bike lanes and um i know that fallon is part of it there is a stretch and i think that and i but i don't know if saintsbury is the connector because to jeff's point that's the problem with our community um is is connecting it to something else and where do the bikes go and not just throwing the the um, cycling um, lanes in but I'll pull it up and I'll have a better look at the map um, and then I'll maybe send the cycling strategy to everybody just for um, just for a reminder what the county's doing um, but um, uh, it is um, and last year at County Council was the first year that Council actually invested money in the cycle, like in into the actual lanes. We'd had the cycling strategy, but we hadn't invested any money in lanes. And so um, you'll see on Medway Road, um, they redid the road between Ballymote and Adelaide, and um, they've got cycling lanes in there. So that's the approach that the county is taking on cycling. Uh, Jaden. 
Uh, thanks. Just on the topic of sidewalks, try to put my hand down. Um, I think it's. I think it'd be important. Um, Saintsbury being a, a fairly busy road and probably will be more busy in the future with the um, potential elements we see um, north. Sidewalks on both sides of the road would make sense. And um, I think especially trying to make that connection all the way to Main Street and sort of that commercial hub around Clark's and Tim Hortons, um, it would be good to have sidewalks on both sides of the road. And that would just kind of help make it a more accessible uh, streetscape and a safer uh, place for people to walk. I know it's uh, walking on the shoulder shoulder or seeing people push strollers on a shoulder it's not really a uh, ideal um or accessible so i i think that um sidewalks on both sides would probably be key um and then just as saint urbanizes further north um up towards gilmore um it would just avoid having maybe a gap in the sidewalk network in the future. So just wanted to share those comments. Okay. Anything else on that one? Okay, Jeff. Okay. For consideration, um, so generally it's desirable to complete engineering the year before we do a construction project. Um, that way it gives us uh, a better chance to, uh, to plan. Um, unfortunately, this year has been such a busy year. Um, we're getting backed up on our engineering, but, um, but that's what we really like to do. So at looking at the current asset management plan, we have a, a listing for Nicoline and Water Streets uh, to be improved in 2023. Um, I don't, I don't have, I didn't go forward and, and bring in estimates because I, I think we need to to do some consideration before I move forward with with one of these projects or both of these projects, and the and the reason why is I, I bring up uh, um, Queen Street. Um, was in uh, the books to do some engineering on because we have a Sobble Fields um, starting up there. I didn't move forward with engineering on Queen because one, um, a Sobble is still working at their project. So I'd rather have them do some of the heavy lifting before we get in there uh, and spend any of um, our money. Um, and uh, two, um, I think we should, no, I think we should look at what a Sobble fields brings to the table uh, in their roadway. Um, and then if you consider the upgrades to the arena, um, would this be the proper time or would 2023 or 2024 be the proper time to make um, community drive go all the way through um, and then finish off that uh, allow us to uh, um, kind of tie up the loose ends uh, instead of having these two construction projects kind of deadhead into the park. Um, it, it's just something to consider. Um, and um, if there ever was maybe a time, then maybe this is the time to look at Community Drive and Queen Street. Um, the other thing that I bring up is that uh, with the Westdale development that has come to light, we don't have a plan on Main Street um, doing any work from, from basically the arena um, Along the south side, MJ's the um, the um, you know past Luke and architect, and then out towards the um, the Westdale development. Um, I maybe there's some consideration there, maybe some desire by council to to start looking at that section. Um, are we going to want if that development uh, gets built as it's being planned for? Do we want sidewalks uh, so people can access? Uh, that development, um, or are we um, are we just going to see what further development brings in that area? Uh, I'm not sure. I, that's 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 a, again a reason why it's it's something maybe we should be considering. Um, and and um, yeah, so that's why 
you know, everything right kind of in there is open for discussion. Okay, um, comments on that. So we don't have commercial development charges. If we were to put commercial development charges in January 1st for the sake of discussion, then could we um, start getting um, development charges from the West Dell um, development to help pay for some of that urbanization? Or is it too, are we too late in the game on that? Wow. Well, did you want me to take a stab at the answer? Yeah, Ron, I, <laughs> I, I think, I think we, uh, yeah, you might be throwing a curveball at, at, at West Dell because obviously that's one of the, that might've been one of the attractive features that, that made them uh, locate in our community. Mm -hmm. So I, I, yeah, I, I think you want to be careful maybe on that one, but I, I do think until such time as I actually get a building permit because that's, or, or sign a development agreement, that's the stage at which the, uh, any development charges would be applicable. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the other thing is there's a process you have to go through in order to set those development charges too. And that's not a, um, you know, that's not a four week process. That's, that's quite a lengthy process. So we'd have to talk to BM Ross about how quick we can. Right. Put one. Yeah. No, I understand that. I guess I'm just asking that out of, I don't know, out of spite maybe, but where we kind of drop the ball, but I guess how many communities in Middlesex have commercial development charges? I think Strathroy does. As far as I know, Strathroy does, Middlesex Centre does, I, I think Thames Centre even does, I think. I'd have to okay. double check. I would have so, to double. so the bigger municipalities, essentially. Um, I mean, I think it's, it's, I think we need to think about um, the urbanization on Highway 4 leading to that development. Um, we talk about connectivity, we talk about walkability. Um, it would be great if you lived in Lucan to be able to walk up to get whatever that commercial development might be offering um, rather than having to drive. Uh, and I, I think, I mean, it's, I think it was said earlier about maybe when we were talking about Saintsbury, it's not going to get any cheaper to do it. Um, so we should probably start to look at that um, as to what that looks like, what sort of costs we um, need to start thinking about, um, because the longer we put it off, the more expensive it'll be. And then it's interesting, I think the comment, I, I am kind of... Um, maybe surprised Jeff about having the discussion about community drive. I've always kind of, I mean, I think there's always, there's, there's been a definite push maybe from some neighbors in that area um, to maybe think about opening up community drive. But I guess I'd always had the impression from a staff perspective that that really wasn't maybe something that we would be considering at least at this, at this time. So I think it's worth the discussion myself. Yeah, and, and I agree that you're exactly right, Madam Mayor. And, and it wasn't on my radar. In fact, I thought, you know, why, you know, why do we need another streak um, through there? But at the same time, if we don't look at the options um, that, that, you know, um, is I think presenting itself now, um, we wouldn't, we, you know, we might miss something. So um, we can easily say, no, let's just, let's just hold off um, on that project to a later mm -hmm. date until to, if, if we're still, uh, or we can make a decision and say, no, we don't, don't want it open. But uh, um, yeah, I, I agree hundred percent. I, I was under the assumption I was on a back burner um, project, but then after standing out there and, and working and, and seeing how the, uh, the new stage of the arena is going to be built and, 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 um, you know, one resident, uh, did, did mention that, um, um, you know, how other municipalities have an, a, a second access to, uh, to, a, to an arena in a, in a, in a sporting complex uh like the park uh so for venues to be able to get in and out um and that sort of thing i, I do see how that makes sense um so I, you know I, yeah so i yeah i don't know i i agree i wasn't on my uh wasn't on my my uh top of my uh list to do but at the same time i think after seeing what's going to happen we're going to 
do a lot of work on with with the sawable fields and um you know may, if there was a time to to extend it it's it, it could be now so well i would support having those discussions um like i would i i don't think that we should shelve that i think we should look at to see what the options are that's my personal thought yeah. um and this, and, oh, and oh, this yep. just, to, just to make sure that everybody's aware, this is not about making a decision to build it next year. This is just a decision to start talking about it yep. uh, and get it. And get, same with Main Street. Um, w- this is just to start the discussion so we can actually plan budget work and, and, and projects further out. So, yep. uh, yeah. Uh, Dave. Yeah, you, you just kind of answered my question I, I was going to say I, I'm certainly I'm not in favor of staff spending currently spending time or budgeting or doing anything for you know sidewalks and urbanizing from the arena up to the commercial development at this time I agree with Madam Mayor it may be expensive in two or three years but I, I'd certainly like to see shovel in the ground development built out and then staff and future council plan that I, I'm certainly in agreement that uh, you know I don't know about future council but Certainly, right now, I with what you've already presented to us, uh, just just doing working with the county on Saintsbury and Alice Street, and there's only so much money in time. Um, I'm certainly, um, I, I you know, I'm not in favor. I'm just this. I'm not in favor of doing much work or studies or costs on that at this time. Don't get me wrong, Dave. I'm not saying like go ahead with it, but I do think it needs to be part of. The discussions that we do have in the coming year, I, I I don't think we should lose sight of, of, of thinking about what urbanization looks like. Mm-hmm. Any other discussions? Okay. Um, the one uh, item at the on that still on that page is our township design standards. And uh, I know we talked about this um, uh, through a quick report I did in that we bring it back up at, at, at budget time. And um, so I think everybody, I think uh, council, um, when, we, when we get into some development and we start looking at new development, this becomes a, a fairly hot topic about how do we, how do we um, consolidate and, and I don't want to say improve, but how do, we, how do we make sure our designs of our new developments are meeting our needs as a community, and this is this is where 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 it comes together, is in the do- design standard. So, I did put forty thousand in my original report. I had thirty. Um, it really the budget line item here really comes down to the scope that council wants to do it at. Um, I think I think what we do is is we we create a line item if we want to move forward with it, and we. Um, we do some education and we see, we see what uh, options bring, bring forth some options for council, how, how, what the scope of this project would be. Um, and, and we can go from there. So I don't want to get stuck on the exact amount. And although we're doing budget and that's what we're here for, uh, I think some of that will come down to the scope of the project, which I, you know, obviously I can't, I can't speak for council on that, that topic right now. So. comments on that well i've got one i just okay. want to verify like i've heard developers say this but i don't quite understand it and i'm not sure if jeff if if, if this is what that means is like it seems like the developer will go into a subdivision build the same house over and over and over again they got their cookie cutter house and it's the same look or is this more about Diversity. roads and heights and different things like that or is that like entrances i just sorry i just not quite understand oh. yeah yeah exactly um deputy mayor so this is really deals with this this deals with um how we want to design our boulevards trees uh green space um it, it, it like and again i go back to the scope of this it can talk about um, it can talk about everything you mentioned, or we can scale it back. Um, if it starts to get, you know, too large, we can, you know, design standards can be, um, 
um, you know, there's there's design standards for downtown, which you know Lisa is working on. This will fit in with that. Um, but yeah, it it it's it's how we if we can give these des design standards to a developer that's that's beginning the phases of a new development, yep. they'll have well they should. Um, bring back a development that's based on these designs. So um, if we're looking at, um, you know, a side, sidewalks of a certain width, uh, a trail system of a certain, um, you know, um, requirement, yeah. these are all things that will go in the design standards. So lays out, lays out a little bit of our expectations before sitting down, because really a lot of that should be controlled at, you know, potentially site plan with the developer, but then all of a sudden they'll pretend they're shocked and it costs them money. But if this is an expectation, yeah. this design standard, it helps staff, I would assume. Like I, I look at the car wash, our car wash there, and I don't know whether, you know, Dan, Ron, or you should get credit for it or, or the developer. I, I, I just, that for a car wash, that site plan, the way it was designed and the, the, the you know, the looks from, you know, from other car wash that drove by, um, it's amazing what what staff was able to hold that development to for site plan. I'm, you know, I'm very impressed with that. I've been meaning to say that, but I don't. You know, it's. Uh, but yeah, so I I, th I think this assists staff on on creating better yes better looks for our community. I absolutely I'm sure yep. in favor. Of it. So. Yeah. Yep. Daniel. Yep. Thank you. Sorry. I no, was no, muted. Thank, no, thank, thank you, Madam. No, I totally agree with the deputy bear. The, um, this is more about, um, and I think I totally agree with this creativity and diversity. And just in recent discussions with, um, with consultants about, you know, future residential and what it's going to look like and those sorts of things. And, and, and people shouldn't be surprised about what it is that we expect in the community. You know, and I use the term, we're using that 1950s paradigm to build things and we need to, we, we can't do that. So, I mean, this is to me is, setting a new standard and again you know why why do we have to follow when we can lead and this might be an opportunity for us to sort of you know say what what are our sidewalks going to look like and and how many trees should we be putting in and this is what we were expecting in our community if you're going to build a community and to the deputy mayor's point and uh, if i hope i have it right is that you know people should get this before further developing and there's no surprises this is what we expect uh in our community so so i i think i think this is a good idea thank you Okay. Okay. Anything else on that page? Okay. So, um, due to uh, budgets, um, our water and our wastewater obviously broke down. So, we'll start with the water. Um, this is a capital, some capital items that are for the water um, side of things. Um, the first line item is the construction uh, on Alice Street again, um, and the um, the number we're getting back um, um, from the engineers are uh, two hundred fifty thousand for the water main to be replaced. So, so just to just to touch base on that, one of the reasons Alice is on the list uh, in the asset management plan was the water main uh, is ductile iron through there, and it, it's at the age now where it's recommended to be replaced before it. Uh, before it deteriorates uh, further, um, as well as there's some sanitary um, sanitary repairs that that need to be made as well, which I'll we'll we'll run into that later. So um, yeah, so that's that's the Alice uh, side of things. So um, the booster station roof um, is leaky. Um, that's the uh, William Street uh, pumping station at the corner of William and Denfield. It's a flat roof. Um, so it will take, uh, it's a flat roof with uh, asphalt and stone on it. So it's, it's not a cheap roof, um, but at the same time, uh, it's been on there for a while. I don't have the exact, uh, I know the guys have been patching it over the last few years, um, but now it's time to, uh, to replace it. So um, that's on the list this year. And then we have a number of uh, uh, carryovers, the generator and the bulk water. We're, we're still working on the generator as we speak. Um, I just don't think it'll be completed before the end of uh, the 2021 budget. And the bulk water system uh, staff uh, 
um, had a handle on uh, that, replace, replacing the bulk water system at the tower. Um, but there was an item that just wasn't going to line up to work. So um, they backed off and we're in, um, we're looking at another system as we speak. Um, so I'm, um, that's not going to be replaced before the end of the year. Um, the industrial land water main extension was in the budget for 2021. Um, Everspring Farms um, has not, and we were, they're just starting to come into their design this coming year. So there was really no hurry for us to put that water main in this year with all the activity that's going on out there. So um, we have it in the budget to do next year. Um, and, and put it in. So it's just an extension from the current phase two portion on, um, on Fallon uh, down to um, just past the laneway to the uh, wastewater treatment plant. We have to expand it. So, and that's the water. Anybody? Um, Jaden. Right, just another quick clarification for the Alice Street um, construction, 250,000. I think the previous slide had 1 million. So was the million just for the roads piece or is that the total and this falls within it? Yeah, good. Or, that, yeah, that's a great question for clarification. So no, the 1 million is just for the road portion. And then this Alice Street construction, this, this portion under the water is the water portion. And then there'll be a small amount on the sanitary on the sanitary side, it, it ends up being 1.3 million altogether. Um, but for budget purposes, we break it out into the into the separate budgets. But yeah, we got to make sure everybody's aware that that that's on top of the one million dollars. Okay. Okay. Uh, sanitary. Um, Again, Alice Street, I have 50,000 in there. Um, the sanitary on um, Alice, there's one section that is um, sagged on us, or not sagged, but it, it has a bad section in it. We did a video of it, and um, so we don't have to replace the entire um, uh, sanitary line. Um, the rest of it's in, in pretty decent shape. So. The good news there, that's great news because uh, that's one of the most expensive, that's one of the more expensive uh, um, um, is replacing live uh, sanitary. So we're good there. So 50,000 for the Alice Street cons construction. Uh, the generator upgrades, they're going on as we speak. I, I, I'm thinking they, they might be done in 2021, but they might not be. So I just didn't want anybody um, if, if they actually got carried over, um, we wanted to make sure that um, that's where it is. We are working at Fallon, upgrading the, um, the generator at Fallon as we speak. Um, the contractor uh, should be in there um, working anytime on that. So um, hopefully that's done before the end of the year. So um, I'm, before I go to the next one, I, I don't think anybody will have any questions on those two items, but before I go to the next one, because we're starting to get into something that there's probably going to be questions on. Okay. Um, the wastewater treatment expansion. Um, you'll, we're, we're moving into 2022. Um, I talked to um, BM Ross is currently um, working towards the, um, the class EA. Uh, to finish that portion of the project will be about $60,000. So to, to finish the class EA uh, that BM Ross is working on right now, it'll be $60,000. We then start another kind of phase of the project. We can start the design, the design um, um, portion of the project. Um, and again, um, uh, numbers uh, on for 2022 would be around two hundred and sixty four thousand uh, dollars to start the design on uh, the expansion. Um, again, I'm not. Uh, this is where uh, there will have to be some discussion, um, maybe at a later date on how we proceed with the expansion. Um, BM Ross was was. Um, has done, um, you know, they're working on the, the, the class EA. Um, we have to make a determination on how we want to proceed, whether we're going to go to 
um, to an RFP for, for further work. Um, there is cost to all that and there is cost to timetables. Um, but for now, for the budget process, we, we can put in 264,000 as a figure to get us started on the design uh, process. Um, the, um, yeah, um, I guess maybe I'll stop there and see if there's anybody, before I go any further, would there be any questions on the expansion numbers there? Big numbers, but I don't think that's, I think we're. So that will be incorporated, like we'll be able to recoup all that through development charges. Um, but at this point, we we can fund it through our reserves. Is that how you, how you're doing it? Yeah, that's correct. So okay. there will be, um, you know, as the project finishes, um, we can break it out. There'll be a breakout of development charges versus uh, uh, what we're just replacing due to age, that sort of thing. So the majority of it will be development charges, but at this point, we're we're just taking it out of the um, capital reserves, yeah. and then development charges will go back in and replenish that as we collect them. Okay. 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 My last item um, is the flow monitoring. Um, we're doing that right now. Um, and if for some reason I don't, I, if there's some flow monitoring comes back and that we do have some sort of projects that are red flag that we need to bring forward to council sooner than later, I just wanted to make sure everybody's aware that um, if we had to do some engineering on some sanitary means that needed to be upgraded, um, due to flows, um, the, the excessive flows, then that'll be something that'll come up in January. Um, but there's no, at this point, I don't expect that. Um, but I just wanted to make a note of that, that that could be something that comes up in January. Jaden. Um, for the, uh, the third item there with the, the, I guess the design portion, once we get through the EA for the wastewater treatment plant expansion, um, the 264,000, that's a figure that EM Ross has provided that we're kind of using as uh, an estimate to carry forward for budget purposes, but it's still, I guess, not determined whether we would go with an RFP to award the the design or whether we continue with the or would that be something that will later come to council i think that i think that's a great question it's, it's something that would come to council for discussion i don't think that's i think the as long as we have a line item in the budget um of the 264 for now um I think that's that's really what what that's for. Yeah, does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it makes yeah. sense. I think uh, like being a fairly significant um, design assignment, in, in, I would think that an RFP would help ensure that we get the best value for our, our money. Um, not to say that you know BM Ross has done a great job to date, um, but it is a pretty big. Uh, piece of money for design so i think uh i would think that an rfp would be a good decision decision something to talk about yeah definitely definitely well any other discussion on this page okay I think that's it. Are you passing off to Paul or are you, you going to keep Jeff on the hot seat for a few more minutes? One thing for Jeff or yep. just to ask him, Jeff, you're, you're somewhat, you know, new to, to our community in the last two years, I believe. So going through this budget and going through the reserves that's there, there's some there's some heavy lifting there there's lots of stuff there's there you know i never have a, 
are you concerned about, I'm not concerned about the reserves being used up. If that's what they're there for. But were you, were you surprised that there wasn't enough or how much there was there? I'd just like to comment from, from what your thoughts are from that standpoint. And I don't worry. I just blame my previous counsel for <laughs> what you say. So. <laughs> no, if I, if I can, I, I, I think, uh, I think, uh, Luke and Madolf's done an excellent job at keeping up on their infrastructure. Um, I think, uh, I, you know, um, with, with some of the stuff that's been done to replace some of the older infrastructure that's in the ground, our, our sanitary and, and water, I think, I think we're doing really well. Um, we do have some heavy lifting in the next, like Alice, Saintsbury, the expansion, Chestnut pumping station needs, needs a bit of work. We've got some, some big projects. Um, but we got some room to take a breather too. Um, I think I think we're going to redo. We're going to up, update the asset management plan, um, and I think um, I think there's room there um, to take take some breather and make sure that our reserve funds do stay. If we deplete them down, that we can we can um, uh, replenish them. Um, on the road side, we've we've got some good roads out in the country. Um, you know, there's obviously, uh, you know, uh, could be some discussion if we wanted to do further construction outside, um, you know, on some of the rural roads. Um, but no, I, I think I, I'm, I think Luke and Madolf has done an excellent job at, at, at creating some reserves and yet still, still keeping ahead of, uh, keeping doing a little bit each year, if I can put it that way. Um, yeah. so no, it's, it's, that's, that's, I think this is going to be a big year or so for, and not depleting the reserves, but reducing the reserves. And uh, which again, that's what, that's what they're there for. So the heavy, I, I was, I just felt pleasantly surprised when Catherine sent out the, the reserve report. And I, I felt even after seeing some of these projects, um, you know, it was, there were some numbers higher there than I just remembered or thought. So no, thank you. Okay, anything else for Jeff? Okay, thanks for that, Jeff. Yep. Okay, Paul. <laughs> Thank you to you, Madam Mayor. Uh, obviously the first uh, item, uh, community center phase two. Uh, we don't know the cost yet. We just know the estimate, um, but this will be funded through uh, the ICIP grant as well of, as uh, fundraising reserves and a loan. Uh, so on that one, there's still um, there's still some unknowns until we, we get to that point. At the same time, uh, there's a relocation of the skate park uh, to uh, Elm Street uh, for that same thing. You know, timing and scope. Is that something that happens in 2022? Does it happen in 2023? Because um, it, it, it won't. Everything's going up in price. So we, we do have a lot of major items on our uh on our agenda this year. Um, after that, uh, we get to the multi-purpose courts. Uh, we did receive 100,000 in funding from the ICIP COVID program. Um, for similar programs, uh, projects to this, uh, I know communities have come in around 250,000. Uh, so there, there may be, you know, once we get to the actual uh, RFP process of this, There'll be some discussion to have about, you know, the, the township's contribution above and beyond the 100,000. Um, you know, um, part of that is, you know, we've, we've received uh, feedback from the community of what they'd like to see there. Uh, I think it's still the same idea as we propose in the grant, and, you know, just two courts, different sports there. Um, pricing is, is, is fluctuating right now. It's, that's the hard part. Um, and then at, at that point, there is also, this is the opportunity that we should maybe be looking at uh, a playground as well at Spencer Park where we're putting the multi-purpose court. Uh, this can be funded through development charges uh, that's already collected, um, as well as there's also been some fundraising, uh, local community fundraising in Spencer Park area uh, to go towards this. Okay, questions on this page.
Okay, so I guess my question, Paul, so the number one, obviously, we're going to go ahead with the community center renovation. Mm -hmm. And so the other two projects, I, well, the multi-purpose athletic courts, I, um, I mean, we've received the grant so that we pretty much have to go ahead with that. Um, are you saying, though, the playground um, is that um, is that just up for discussion or are you actually hoping to go ahead with it? Uh, it's up for discussion. Um, I think it would be an appropriate time to do it as we, we are doing other work in the park. I know there has been community fundraising for that project. I've reached out to some members of the community who are doing that to try and get that number. I have not received it yet. I think that's going to be, you know, we'll, we'll, I will have to come back to council with what that number is. The number that's present there is just to show you kind of uh, that's equivalent to kind of what we put in Granton th this year. Um, so, Cause it wouldn't be a larger park. Um, I, I do think in, in the next budget, and you know, when we get to talking about playgrounds, the next large area playground, we should maybe look at a fully uh, accessible playground. Um, Cause there's a difference between an accessible playground and then fully accessible. Um, but we do need, you do need a large area for that. I, I think that would be wise in the future to kind of look at that. I don't think this would be the perfect opportunity for that because it, it, it does cost a lot more and it's a smaller park. Um, but I do think it would be a good time for this. Um, and I guess with, I, I, and I know it's too early in the process, but um, just wonder if there's opportunity um, to be creative with that playground to not maybe make it, um, and I, and I don't mean anything by it, but to, not to make it a, like a cookie cutter playground. Um, is there? Could we look at maybe? And I would, I, as I say, I know that this isn't the time, but I'm, I'm kind of putting it out there to put in the back of your head, just about maybe other um, items that might be there that aren't in our other parks that that would make it unique to go there. Um, that's all I'm saying. I just think this, since you've got a blank ca canvas, um, could we look at maybe something a little different? Uh, absolutely. I think that the main thing that we need, would need to determine is that that cost value, and then we would put it out to an RFP for proposals. And that would be part of it. You know, we'd want to see if you, there's naturalized earth, earthscape designs that you could go for. There's, there's lots of different items you could apply for. So absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then um, I guess back to the skate park, what is your thoughts on the skate park? Um, you've got in there timing and scope. So what are you thinking about the timing? It, it's a difficult one because obviously we don't want people to go without an amenity for a year. Um, we have a very large budgeted year this year. Um, there's a lot of major items on there. And from what I've received back for, for, for quotes and pricing, um, beyond just, you know, pouring a pad and moving what we have here, which may be the cheaper option, uh, but it might not be the best option because you're not getting a kind of ideal skate park. Um, the actual port and place skate parks, it's prices are going up. And I, I don't know if maybe it'd be appropriate to, you know, maybe forego for a year replacing that, you know, it, we do have Granton. It's a great park. People drive from London to go to that park. It would be much from people to drive from Lucan to go to that park. Um, not ideal. Obviously, you don't want people to go without. But with so many large items on our on our list this year, it may not be appropriate to do right now. I know um, Middlesex Center's skate park, the one that they just did, that came with a quite a price tag. I believe it was close to if not over three hundred thousand dollars i think so you are right that is another large project um to consider whether we put it off i guess i worry too about um you know again how do all these projects get paid for um there's no question we're we're going to be going out to our community for a large um uh, fundraising uh, initiative for the the community center. Um, how many times can you go back to the community looking for donations for for these sorts of projects? So um, I do think that that 
the I agree you don't like to to be without for a period of time but perhaps maybe there's a more appropriate way to go about budgeting for it and planning for it than just saying you're going to replace it just to replace it absolutely is there any any more discussion on that page okay paul uh secondly all right Second page, uh, soccer field development. Uh, once again, we still don't know until those tenders go out. Um, they are hoping to go out very shortly. Uh, engineering is at 53,000, um, but the tenders are planning to go out in December for award in January. Uh, these will be funded through some of the parks reserves, uh, plus hopefully donations, and then also uh, pursuing of a loan for construction. Uh, we, we're working right now with engineers, uh, the soccer association to kind of finalize what the exact needs are for right now, uh, for like a, a, if there's a need for a change house, if there's need for washrooms, lighting and so forth to kind of solidify what that project looks like and hopefully that'll help determine the cost. Okay, questions on the soccer field. Paul? Paul, you did a good job doing a lot of TBDs on your slides. <laughs> so you won't have to I don't like it. Good, 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 good work. <laughs> I don't like it, but unfortunately with a lot of these and the way the industry is right now, we don't know. <laughs> no, no, understood. Thanks. Okay. Any other further discussion on the soccer fields? Okay. Okay. So this this item was added as a, an additional for discussion. Uh, pool upgrades. Uh, the timing. Uh, during do we do it during phase two construction? Do we do it after? Uh, there's always opportunities for grants. I know we're looking at accessibility for the pool. There's always grants for accessibility, so this might be an appropriate project for that. Uh, so I, I open it up to the council to kind of have a, a, a brief discussion on, on this and what their desires are. I'll start if I can. Yeah. Okay. Or, sorry, I didn't yeah, put my No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I, this year to me, like if, if, if I, I don't believe it would cost any money. I, I think it's imperative that we proceed now with a request for a proposal or quote on a renovation uh, with accessibility. And, and I mean, it appears to me what we're doing is we're, we're going to have great dressing rooms and maybe a poor facility. I don't, you know, I just, or, you know, we, we strategized about lifeguards a little bit and I, I, you know, there seemed to be buy-in I feel from council and staff that, that, you know, potentially paying for some of their schooling, should entice the, the young kids to come and stay. So um, if there wasn't buy-in for that, I'd be saying fill it in with, you know, with grass, like grasses, but there seems to be buy-in. We, we need to get creative for lifeguards and if current staff and councils aren't in agreement with that, we should, we should fill it with dirt. And then providing we're in agreement with getting creative with lifeguards, we should, we, I don't, I'm not in favor of not, really considering that as a larger scope of the arena build and not having great dressing rooms in a poor facility. That's my comment. Any other discussion on the pool? If I, if I may, Madam Mayor? Yeah, Daniel? for sure. Yeah. Sorry, thank you. So I was just, and I'm just wondering about just not, I mean, not delaying any kind of, I mean, we do have, I think to the Deputy Mayor's point, I mean, I know we've discussed it, I think we have buying about about keeping this and, and and upgrading it, making it more accessible, uh, and, and making it more usable for everyone. So I'm just wondering, I guess when we talk about the timing during or after phase two, I, I'm just wondering why we why we wouldn't do it, do it during. If I can ask that question, getting it all done at the same time. If only because I don't I don't you know, I'm not an engineer and I'm not I'm not in construction, but I'm just wondering, just moving forward with this because we're it, to me it just seems like we need to do the whole community center and not just and it's, it just seems to me like like the deputy mayor said we, i think we need to do this right away so and i don't that's sort of what we should be discussing is is you know 
getting it done, figuring out what we want to do with it, getting it done because we have buy-in about keeping it open, I think. Paul? Yeah, just if I may, for clarity for council, uh, as part of phase two, the, uh, the, the change rooms to the pool surface, as well as the guardhouse and the uh, machinery room are, are included in phase two. The only thing not included is the actual physical pool itself and the, and the deck around it. So the only thing not included is the accessibility to the pool. So I think the key to remember is that the money that we got for the grant includes everything but the pool. So if we work on the pool, that's our cost to take on. It can't be, um, it can't be included in the costs for what's happening, um, what what's being engineered right now. So, so my my um, my thoughts are. Um, I think we should go ahead um, to see what our options are. I, I, I really do think um, to uh, Daniel's point, um, you know, let's do it all at once. I think the deputy mayor brought up, I think two council meetings ago when we were talking about the lifeguards is, will we even have a pool open in the summer because of construction? Um, so, I mean, I know that's one of the first questions you're going to ask Paul, but uh, you know, it, I, I guess my thought would be if it was a shortened season because of construction or limited season, then you don't have a season and you and you do the work on the pool, then you, you, you do them hand in hand. Um, it, it, I, everyone's going to get tired of me talking about it. But, you know, a year ago, yeah. I took part in a event at a renovated pool at a neighboring municipality and I couldn't believe what was done with the pool um, for a reasonable cost, considering um, I think when we had plans um, drawn up a number of years ago about a new pool, um, it was in the millions of dollars, uh, that, that design. Um, so certainly through casual conversation, um, with I've been led to believe that our pool can can be brought up to accessible standards. It can, it, there, there are things that can be done to it to make it accessible and that there are things that can be done under the deck um, to, um, you know, fix the concerns that are there for the age of the pool that it is. Um, and, it, and, and it can be done um, uh, probably more reasonably than building a new pool. So I certainly would be in favor with, with yeah. moving forward and at least seeing seeing what can be done and what that price is. Uh, Daniel? Madam Mayor, I was just wondering too, Paul, is there, would there be an accessibility grant for that if you're gonna do, do renovations to that? Uh, absolutely, and, the, and that's part of the discussion that we're having is that, you know, timing wise, obviously right now, if as phase two is going forward, it would be the perfect time to do work on the pool if the pool couldn't be open because of construction. So if there are accessibility grants that we can apply for, it would be appropriate time to do that. Um, just whether or not they align together is the, the difficult, difficult part. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. I would, I might incur, you know, to do some light rating to see what grants are available out there and what sort of timelines you're looking at, you know? Yep. And I do think the community, um, I, I think the community could get quite excited about a renovated pool, even if it meant having it to have it closed again, um, you know, during construction. Um, I, I, I think that, um, you know, it's been the topic of discussion and the community for quite some time. Um, and I know the people I talk to um, are very much in favor of keeping the pool open. I haven't had anybody, you know, um, say to me, fill it in, put grass over, you know, extend the parking lot. Um, so I, I do think that there is, there is very much support for, for the facility. Okay. Discussion, any other discussion on that? Okay, that's all that uh, Paul had. That's yeah. all our projects that we had um, uh, for discussion at, at this point are in the works. It's uh, 
if all goes ahead, it'll be a, a very busy year. Um, so just thank you for listening and then we'll incorporate all our discussions into um, how we finalize and move along into the budget process. I uh, just wanted to say um, some of those things that are just coming up for tender, the big projects, those two big projects, the soccer fields and the um, and the phase two, if soon as once we get those numbers and put a funding plan together, we should uh, look at applying for construction loans through whatever means that may be before any interest rates kind of increase as there's talk of that happening next year. Right now, the rates are still decent. So just wanted to mention that as well. So if there's any, that's all we have, unless there's any other questions or comments, I'll pass it back to the mayor. I might just have one, Catherine, and maybe this is one that is more, is more appropriate when we start our discussions with the operating budget. But just for anybody watching, um, because I'm thinking for anybody watching um, our meeting tonight, likely participated in our budget survey. And so I'm wondering how um, the results from the survey factored in to um, what the staff's presented today. Um, that's a good point. So I believe a lot of this, the comments that we received through that survey um, have been addressed in this or will be for consideration or a lot of it is more in the operating budget. Yeah. So that'll, a lot of those things will come up at that time. But now that you've mentioned that, that thanks for the reminder, I think we're going to um, now post those results on the website so everyone can see that with the exception of some of the, the comments, but more the, um, those other questions, uh, we'll post those uh, the, results. Yeah, like the, the, like the graph ones and all of that. Correct, more okay. of those percentages or how you've, the, the, the scaled ones, yep. rather than the direct uh, um, questions, uh, comments. So mm -hmm. we'll be doing that in the coming days. No, I think that's great. I think that'd be good information for, for everyone to see. So thanks for that. Um, Deputy Mayor Manders, did you have something else you want to say? No, actually, I don't. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, well then, um, was there any other comments from Council? So seeing none, I just want to um, thank everybody, um, all of our senior staff for um, putting the budget package together, um, for reporting back to us today. Um, it's a lot of information. And as Catherine just said, if my goodness, if everything goes through, what a busy year it'll be um, in, in Luke and Bidolf, that's for sure. But do appreciate the background on everything that was presented. Um, and it's, ex you know, exciting projects to be discussing. And uh, Catherine and Tracy, um, I just want to thank you for your leadership on this and um, managing the staff on this presentation. So thank you very much for that. With that, I will ask for a mover and a seconder to uh, receive our, the report number FIN-18-2021 for information. A mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Regan and Councillor Hodgins, all opposed. And that's carried. Any notices of motion? There's no motions, no bylaws. So with that, I will result, well, I'll ask for a mover and a seconder to adjourn our meeting at, where's my clock? At 7.49 p.m. A mover and a seconder, Deputy Mayor Manders and Councillor Westman. All was, opposed? Oh, sorry. Yes, Catherine, sorry. There was one bylaw um, there, the confirming bylaw, I believe. Oh, see, that's what happens when I do the meeting from home. I don't have the bylaw in front of me, so. Sorry to interrupt. No, that's good. So I'm going to retract the motion to adjourn. And I guess I should have gone to my my electronic agenda. Okay, so if, a mover and a seconder, so that if no one cares to speak to bylaw 77-2021 uh, on its first, second, and third reading, that it be considered to have been read a first time and passed, read a second time and passed, and read a third time and passed. So for the bylaw, a mover and a seconder, please. Uh, Councilor Regan and Deputy Mayor Manders, all opposed. 
that's carried. So we'll adjourn the meeting now at 7.50 p.m. And a mover and a seconder for that, please. Uh, Councillor Westman and Councillor Hodgins, all opposed? And that's carried. Thank you very much. Have a good evening.